This is Algebra 2 with Trig, working on Unit 2B.8. We're dealing with the polynomials in story problems. We're looking here, we want to find the value of x that would help us calculate the dimensions of our prism to have a volume of 40. We know that volume of a prism, a prism is a box, it has a polygon for a base, and it works its sides straight up with rectangles on the side. So this is a rectangular prism because the base is a rectangle. The volume, we always know, is length times width times height for all the rectangular prisms. So our volume is going to be 40. The actual length, width, and height, that dimension doesn't matter. You turn the box to a different side, and you can make a different argument. So I would like to put the monomial first, and then put your two binomials after that. So to solve for x, we can't do it in this factor format. So what could we do? We have to multiply our two binomials together. So we'll get 8, or actually x squared, because x times x, and then you get negative 4x and negative 1x, which gives us a total of negative 5x, and then ne positive 4. Negative 1 times negative 4 is a positive 4. Then I expect most of you would distribute your 2x through to get 2x cubed minus 10x squared plus 8x. Now often we would want to bring our 40 over to the other side. And that would be subtracting it to the other side. Now you've got all your terms on one side and it equals zero on the other. Now we've got to look. This is a cubic. How could we get x by itself? What do we do? If we could factor this, but it's a cubic. One way to factor is to try factor by grouping. If this has four terms, this might be possible. Doesn't mean it will work. It might be possible. For it to work, it would have to have the same thing left in the parentheses. So right now we have an x minus 5 in the parentheses when we pulled the GCF out of the first group. Here we can pull an 8 out and we're left with x minus 5. So yes, inside the parentheses is x minus 5. Then you bring down your 2x squared and your 8 and bring down your x minus 5. So we use factor by grouping to break this one apart. Now since it equals 0, we can use our zero product property. set it equal to 0 and when we go through to solve this we see that we would get plus or minus 2i well that is an imaginary answer so we only have one real answer the value of x would have to be 5 5 minus 1 gives us 4, 2 times 5 gives us 10, and 5 minus 1, or 5 minus 4 gives us 1. So if we were going to calculate our volume, we would say length times width, 4 times 10, which is 40, times 1, which is 40. That matched. So that helps. Another thing that you can do, just so you understand what's going on, we come up to our cubic equation, and we could type that in. And when we do our 
All right, I got a funny, funny graph in here, a funny dimension. So zoom number six is our standard. So now it's 10 by 10. We probably want to look down a little bit further, but here we see, see the five. That's the only one we see crossing. But let's see where the rest of the graph is. In your table, you can see that the graph is at negative 40, then negative 52, and then back up to 48, and back up to 40. So we need to get down to about negative 60. So in your window, you can go down to negative 60 or more. And you'll see that there is your cubic. There's all that movement. A cubic can have up to two turning points. So this is why we get that plus or minus imaginary number. Because it does not cross the x-axis in two more spots. It only crosses the x-axis in one spot. And we got that answer of 5. We got the answer of 5. So the calculator can help you get the or help you verify your answer but notice we did not use the calculator to get the answer we did the answer ourselves we showed the work for our answers now we're going to talk about a company and its profit the value of p is a number and that number stands for thousands so if we get a number of 3, then that's going to be 3,000. If we have a number for P to be 28, then that's 28,000. Even better, if we get an answer of 0.5, then that is 500. Um, that's actually, yeah, that would be true. That would be 500. Um, this is our profit equation where X is a number of items. So here they're telling us a lot of information right here. The profit is $14,000 when we produce 2,000 items. So we're going to do 14. We don't have to say 1,000 because the formula, remember, was in thousands. Negative 5X cubed plus 6X squared plus 15X. Here, I would suggest to move each of your terms over to the same side of the equal sign. I'm going to choose to bring each of these terms over to the left side of the equal sign. So that my leading coefficient is positive. I really don't like it being negative. So here is my equation I'm going to use. Now I'm looking here. Before, up in number one, we broke apart this cubic by doing factor by grouping. If we look quickly here and we think about factoring by grouping, we would factor out an x squared. That would leave us a 5x minus 6. And on this side, we have nothing to factor out, so we'd be left with a 15 and a 14. Not the same thing. So factor by grouping is not going to work here. So if factor by grouping doesn't work, then we're going to have to try to use synthetic division to break this apart. We can use possible zeros to help us limit all the possibilities that there would be. We take the factors of 14 divided by the factors of 5. The factors of 14 are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 7, and plus or minus 14. So the factors of 5 are 1, so we divide everything by 1, and also of course 5, so we have to divide everything by 5. When we divide everything by 1, the problems didn't change, so I didn't have to rewrite them. But when I'm dividing by 5, those would be all the decimal versions of where these zeros would be mathematically possible. All right. So these are our possible zeros. So if we were going to start 
synthetic using our 5, negative 6, negative 15, and 14 it would be best to start trying with these numbers. No need to try 3 or 4 or 5 or 6, but trying numbers like 1 or negative 1, 2 or negative 2 would make the most sense. In this case, since we're talking about the number of items, it would probably be a positive number. Help lead you to the right answer. But, just so you understand, you can go to your graphing calculator. This is allowed. You can go to your graphing calculator, type in what we're looking for. This is our equation. And when we graph this out, all right, I have a funny graph here, so I'm gonna hit zoom number six. That's the only zoom that I use. I go back to standard. After I change my window, I need to go back to the standard, and this is an easy way to do that. So what we're looking for are the values where this crosses the x-axis. Where does this cross the x-axis? So looking at our table, it's going to cross the x-axis when x is 2 2 gives us 0, so I'm going to try a 2, bring down your 5, and multiply, bring down your, multiply with the 2 times 4, 2 times 7, and look, when you add vertically every time, the last set happens to be 0. If it's zero, that's a great thing. So x minus two, it's always the opposite. This is your solution. So what makes that solution as a factor? x minus two is a factor. So we have x minus two, five x squared minus plus four x minus seven, and that whole thing is going to equal zero. These are the two factors that multiply together to equal this graph. So we know we have an answer of two, but we knew that originally. I actually didn't even need to use my calculator. I knew that right from the problem that X stands for the number of products in thousands. So if we had 2,000 items, I knew that two was going to work. The question is, what is the other number that's going to work? So I look at this. I think about factoring. What multiplies to be negative 35 and adds to be 4? And we're going to find out that nothing does. Uh, negative 1 and 35 and negative 4 and 7, those two numbers multiply to be negative 35 and they add to be a positive, but none of them add to be 4. So, I have to use quadratic formula. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So, that's going to become negative 4 plus or minus 16. 20 times 7 is 140. So a negative times a negative is a positive. We get 10. So down here we'll have negative 4 plus or minus 156 over 10. 156 can break down into 3 goes into that five times and three goes into that two times and then this happens to be four four goes into that once and three so we have three times four times thirteen well the four can come out of the square root 
So when you take the square root of 4, you get 2. And what you would have left inside is the 3 and the 13, which is 39. So if you wanted to reduce, you see that a 2 comes out of every one of those. Your simplified version of your exact answer is that. And by using our graphing calculator, we can say that negative 2 plus the square root of 39, get that answer, and divide that by your 5, is 0.849. We'll round up to 849, so that is about 850 items. So what did we just do with that problem? First we started with our equation with the information it gave us. We moved everything to the same side. We knew there were possible zeros and the one that we chose was the 2 because they told us that with 2,000 items we get $14,000. So we are at $14,000. So we're going to plug that in, drop down your values, do your calculations, and we come up with 850. Well to check what we thought our graph was, if we look for our zero, to the left bound and the right bound, we'll see right here we get our 0.8489. So 0.849, about 850. So you could have used a calculator to get the final answer, but we wanted to use, if the calculator at all, just to help us check our answer and to verify the work that we were producing help us narrow down the zeros even though it wasn't even needed because this one told us to use two okay. last one this is a prism has a square base So a prism has rectangles for sides, so something like that. And we know that the sides of the base have to be the same, and the height is five feet longer than the sides of the base. So we have our dimensions of x, x, and x plus 5. Well, the volume of a prism is always length times width times height for a rectangular prism. This would be considered a square prism even, but it's a type of rectangle. So we're going to use the fact that 28 is the volume. We can use x times x times x plus 5. x and x makes x squared. Subtract your 28 over. And that is our cubic equation. So we're looking at that cubic equation, trying to figure out how we are going to get x by itself. Can that be factored? Well, we like to factor by grouping, but that needs four parts, so this doesn't have that. And we can't use it and treat it like a quadratic because this is not an even exponent. So, nope, can't do factoring by grouping. So this one does not give us any hints. So we have to look at our possible zeros. Our possible zeros are factors of 28 divided by factors of 1. So of course that's just plus or minus 1 
two, four, seven, fourteen, and twenty-eight. Those are the possible factors. Now again, they didn't give us a hint in this one. They didn't say what it could be. This one gave us, it actually told us what number we could have used. It told us. Here it does not. So you can either start with one or two or three and just work it through yourself. Or you can come over to your calculator, as we've discussed, and you can type in your x cubed plus 5x minus 28. And we can look to see where that's going to cross the x-axis. We can look at our table to see where the numbers are fluctuating. As we get go down with x's, we get smaller and smaller and smaller. Alright, I thought that there would be a little fluctuation in here. Alright, what I just noticed is that x squared times x makes x cubed, and x squared times 5 makes x 5x squared. That needs to be a square. So in my equation, this would need to be a square. And then we can look at our graph. Now you see a little fluctuation down there. So we're going to look down at about negative 40. You see how there's what I was looking for before. We didn't have that. So we're looking here at this spot where it crosses the x-axis. These extra curves, we have two turning points. That's going to happen for a cubic, for many cubics, not all cubics, but for many cubics. That's going to give us actually two imaginary solutions because we only have one real solution. Let's see what that looks like. So in our table, we can see that when x is 2 is a good number to use. It's a pretty common one. But when x equals 2, we saw that that gave us a 0. So we have 1, 5, 0, negative 28. Multiply and add. Multiply and add. Multiply and add. And look at that. We get zero. So x minus 2 is a factor. So x minus 2 is a factor. x squared plus 7x plus 14 is the other factor. Nothing multiplies to be 14 and adds to be 7, so it's not factorable. We kind of knew that because in the graph, we saw that it did not cross a second and third time. It only crossed once, so I expect this to be imaginary numbers. Now, just in case you need to know what those imaginary numbers are, we're going to use the fact that A is 1, B is 7, and C is 14 in the quadratic formula. So we have negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 7 squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So we have 49 minus 56, which is going to leave us with negative 7 plus or minus. This is going to be negative 7. So if it's negative 7, we're going to have an i on the outside with a 7 on the inside. We like to write our final answers with the denominator under each piece. So we have a real numbers and we have the imaginary numbers. So those are your two imaginary answers for this equation. The one that we really need... is to know 2. X is 2 made the problem work. We had that hint when we looked at the graph, 
but we showed our work to verify that we got that by getting zero. Now we bring down the height, which is x plus 5. So we're going to say 2 plus 5. That gives us 7 feet.